G'day guys and welcome to the Centre Bounds for this, my round seven review of how my team did this week. Stay tuned. Yes, guys, here we are once again, another week come and gone, another week where I decide to slide my difficulty up to uber massive chaos nightmare mode difficulty where once again not having max gone comes to bite me in the ass um we scored 22 79 top 19 percent score uh we slid down in the rankings just a little bit not too bad considering again the fact that we don't have max gone uh so we're still hovering around this 20k bracket mark and we're just Teasing, just teasing, trying to get ahead. Harley Reid out of the side this week due to him being managed was not in our calculations this week, unfortunately. So we've had to field, um, and we had to loop. Oh, whoopsies, we had to loop between Karmas and Biggie, and we managed to win it only slightly. <laughs> no, sorry, we lost it only slightly by one point. So. We brought in, of course, Matt Rowell last week. We went early on Jordan Sweet because of the news of what came out with uh, Soldo going to have that knee procedure. I'm not going to bother trying to say that. The knee, the same knee procedure that, of course, one Sean Darcy did earlier in the season, which means that he's going to miss anywhere between four and six weeks. Now, from reports, it looks like it's four to five, but... If Jordan Sweet can maintain his spot in the side and perform decently well, like he did on the weekend with a 136, he was up against, unfortunately, Rowan Marshall, who I thought, yippity doo day, uh, there is no soldo, so let's just go and ride high with Rowan Marshall. Cops some bruising early in the game, and he looked absolutely cactus for the rest, hobbling around all over the place. I thought his night was done before it even begun. So, yeah, this is, it was very sad uh, to see. And now that's back-to-back -back terrible scores from Rowan Marshall. Might as well have just held onto freaking Brody Grundy um, or traded Grundy out to Gorn. Unfortunately, they had the buy right there. Mate, crossroads are amazing. And when you look at it, when you look at it in hindsight, it's just like how disastrous, how disastrous can these 50-50 calls go? It is remarkable. Um, yeah. One to look at and just laugh, to be completely honest. Because uh, if you don't laugh, you cry. And, uh, and believe me, I'm... I've looked at this team and I've cried a lot. But there are some shining lights in the team. Uh, so, yeah, Sweet, very good job, uh, came in. Rao, very good job, 136. He's doing exactly what I want from this superstar. The weapon, dubbed by Abs at the start of the season, and he was very correct. He's averaging 131 points for the year. So very happy with that. So the midfield is performing really well. I ended up trading out Massimo. Because, of course, Massimo D'Ambrosio was managed. And he was subbed the week before that. So I, when I put those two things together, I'm like, something ain't right. And I don't want to risk it. So we're going to go with Dempsey. And I was so happy come quarter time. Yes, we kept Dempsey. He was like on 30-something at quarter time. And he ends on 49. It's like that classic meme of the end is gone. So, uh, yeah, that's exactly how I felt. I was up and up. <laughs> because, Rian, of course, Maxi Gore went a 160 score in the, in his people's VC. And, of course, um, you don't turn down a 127. You just don't. Anything over 120, you take. And <laughs> Marshall, the 63. So the team's done, all in all, the team's done very well. The backline premiums all went over 100. Matt Roberts on 80. Very nice. Best cash cow of the year. Clahisi had copped an injury, a knock to his wrist, arm area. Uh, looked like he was done, but he continued to soldier on and gave us a 65. Hey, no complaints whatsoever. Well done, young man. Um, yeah, Raul's a gun. Merritt, another Anzac Day medal. I did say on the stream, if we win the game, Expect to see a medal around Merritt's neck. 
Well, turns out even if we won or draw, you would still find Zach Merritt because he is captain inspirational. Uh, he's got to be the All-Australian captain at this point of the season. I would imagine no bias aside. Butters with an 82. Look, everyone owns Butters, so it's not too bad. I don't, I'm not going to complain about that. Sarong, 140. Excellent. Bont, 102. A lot of people own Bont. That's all right. Tom Green, giving us... I told you, boys and girls, don't trade out this great man. The second you do, he will come back and and absolutely not just sucker punch you. He'll just look at you in the face and then wow, swing haymaker style. So yeah, Tom Green is the lean, mean, fat grilling machine. Um, 159, if you don't mind. Almost hit his 180 break even. Uh, Dempsey talking about it. Graham, well done. I love this guy. I reckon he's a very fillable option, very safe fillable option. Harley Reid, he's been all rested up now to play against. Of course, my boys. Of course, of course. Everyone is always ready to play against Essendon every week. It doesn't even matter who. Even West Coast, they prepare for games against Essendon. So, yeah, Harley Reid, he's going to be fit and firing against us. Darcy Wilson, well done, young man. I knew you were good. I've been raving about you all preseason and during the season. And I just, just when I thought... Hugo Garcia would be a safer option around the ball. You just come out and dominate on the wing. So, well done. Keep that cash going. Keep that cash gen going, boy. Garcia with a 40. It's not too bad. English with a 134. Could have been more if he could kick straight like the doggies in front of the big sticks. I'm not going to talk about this guy. Absolute tragic tragedy. Uh, Heaney, 120. I mean, he's, he's, he is him. Isaac Heaney is him. Finn McGuinness couldn't do shit. He turned into Magi Noodles, not Finn McGuinness. Uh, Sam Flanders with the 105. Again, look, he's averaging 115 for the year. I mean, like, it's, this is wonderful stuff. Pal, very sad to see him lose all of his CBAs. Uh, he started to get them back in the last quarter, though, so I'm willing to hold on to him. They were no good without him there. Uh, clearly... The problem is Clarko does not appear to know what's going on with that team. And it's because there are too many deficiencies in this team where he doesn't really know exactly what he is he's trying to do. So he just flung all the magnets around in that game and looked to see if there was any possible improvement anywhere. There was none. There were none. Just, it's just, you know that saying, you can't polish a turd. I'm not going to say North Melbourne are a turd, but I'm just going to let you infer that I said that. So Tom Powell, I think, has got to go back into the midfield. Um, there's nowhere else for him to play, really. Uh, their midfield is lacking. And he's a midfielder. Uh, Darcy, 88. Well done, young man. Again, just I might even keep him for the year at this rate. This forward line is so bad. I might as well just keep him. Uh, Cadman with a 53. Continues to make us some money. Um, thank God, Hogan. I thought, thank God, Hogan was uh, released to play this week because then um, you wouldn't see Harris Andrews play on him. But Harris Andrews spent quite a bit of time on Paul Cadman uh, so that he could in peel off him and intercept. And he did that very well. But Cadman struggled hard and got a 53. Well done. He's He's got good tackling pressure at ground level, which is really impressive. Obviously, pinch hitting in the rucks as well. Always increases his scoring. His break even isn't far away. Uh, 53. Is it 62 or 52? Sorry, it's too small like this. Let's just click on him and make it easier to see. Uh, 52 break even. He's up against the Swans, who are the, the hardest matchup for forwards. But if we look at his scoring for the year, he's only gone under 52 once, and it was a 50. So he's been giving us some fairly consistent scores, even against decent defences. So uh, happy to give Aaron Cadman another week this week and hope that he can make us some money. Livingston was looping. Buku Kamis, mate, your break even is also getting very close to your average. 58. You're up against the Hawks. Please, mate. Please. I want you to intercept and I want you to keep playing well. I don't want this 45. I didn't like this 45. You've been one of the highest interceptors in the competition. We needed to translate into points, son. Please. Because uh, soon enough, you're going to be gone too. And Biggie, just just do you, brother. Just keep doing you. Keep your spot in the team and keep making us money. So what I'm going to do this week, that's the team as it currently stands. I think this week we're presented with a really interesting proposition in that Jordan Sweet 
is the first to play this week. So Jordan Sweet, Marshall looked absolutely cactus, bro. He was limping all over the place. Um, and he had a very poor week the week before that. I'm done. Thank you very much. You're not Max Gorn either. And I have to plan to get Max Gorn into my team eventually. So Rowan Marshall, I'm sending you out. Thank you for nothing, you son of a shawarma. Um, and so Livingston can come back here. And then we're going to send Harley Reid here forward. Because Harley Reid should play this week. It was just managed. And he should score really well. He's going to be a keeper for me in my forward line. So Harley Reid can come back on field. Now, in the midfield, we're going to get one Rogers, who looked very good for the Suns on the weekend. So Jake Rogers, thank you, come in. And that 98 in his second game is going to do wonders for his cash generation. And Oli Dempsey, look, he might do all right, but I want to trade him out. I'm sick of it. Um, how dare you scorn me and, and, and bait me into being excited for at least for a quarter and then you dish out a stinker. The way Geelong plays, Oh, it's it's going to be difficult for him to continue scoring really well. And so who am I going to get in this midfield? I want top guns. I want the legends. I want players who are going to be top eight. Uh, is it Sam Walsh? It could very well be Sam Walsh. He's now what? His price is... He's gone up now. He's over 600K. He's up to 608,000, which is obviously really impressive. But I'm not going for that. I'm going for someone just a little bit cheaper in Tuuk Miller. He's got a great run home. Um, they're playing against North Melbourne twice. Uh, they've got West Coast. So, yeah. Uh, they've already played West Coast once, and we saw how well he did with a 149. We saw how well Matt Rowell did with 136. But he's still got North Melbourne twice to come in his fixture. And he's uh, under 600K. This might be the last time I'm going to get him under 600K for a long time. And so I think Tuke Miller at this current price point Happy to pay up for him. I'm not even paying up for him. I've been paying up. I've been paying over six hundred thousand back to back weeks. I got Mera and Rowell in back to back weeks, and they're both. I, you know, Mera I paid six hundred sixty six thousand for, and Matt Rowell I spent like six hundred twenty thousand for. So uh, you think, well, finally taking a step back from paying so much, uh, going for a five ninety one k, and I leave myself with quite a bit of cash in the bank with the intention of obviously I'm at a boost so i can't boost out this week and so obviously we're going to have to be doing some one downs one ups and uh i could go with a sarong captain he is playing against richmond but richmond did a great job in tagging petrarca last week by sending the thief onto him um the aggravated burglar burglar uh so i might not go there i might just stick to the gun that I know, and that's Matt Rao, playing in a slippery, dewy Gabba on Sunday. And we saw what a Tom Green did in slippery conditions as well, when a 159. So I'm going to go with the gun that I know, Matt Rao, and I've got Zach Merritt, who's up against the Eagles on the wide expanses of Optus Stadium. So can't go past the hot hand of Merritt and Matt Rao. And so this is what it looks like keeping some money in the bank so that next week might go for a defender. Now I've got almost a finished midfield. I do want to leave this last spot here for one Christian Petrarca, who I anticipate is going to be a top eight midfielder. And he's still got a bit more money left to drop considering that wonderful tag job. He's got a 188 break even. And, um, that wonderful tag job got him to only score a 93 in addition to the 59. So these are two very bad scores according to his lofty standards, which would see him drop quite a bit more money if he says 116 and 107, should get to 558. So he's still got maybe 40K to lose. And so happy to wait a couple of weeks on Christian Petrarca to go down a little bit. So... I'll leave this spot here available for him. Start probably upgrading the back line. I want to get Tom Stewart next week uh, just off the rip. Looking to get Tom Stewart in the side. He's got a break even of 138, uh, courtesy of that injury that he copped 
in the game against Brisbane where he was going wonderful. He was on track for like a 120 score that game. So happy to wait a week, Tom Stewart, to get under that one. And then his break even should naturally improve. So looking to get Tom Stewart next week. And then these last two spots, I'm looking to get Tom Stewart and Luke Ryan are, are the two players that I'm hoping to w round up my back line with. Thankfully for me, that both of those defenders are going down in price and they're going to become a little bit cheaper for me. Luke Ryan has a 165 break even and he should be tanking in price so much more. This guy would have had like 10 disposals if not for the fact that he had six kick-ins on the weekend. It's so stupid. His scoring is ridiculous. I don't even know how he tummed up in that, in that game. It's just disgusting. Um, pu puke Ryan. So, yeah, Ryan and Stewart. Hopefully going to be my last two here in the back line. And Petrarca, the last one for me in the midfield. So I think I can do that, um, considering that I've got about 200K in the bank. Karma should get to 300. Cadman should get to 300. So that's two players that can net me a lot of cash. Clahisi should get to 300 without a hitch. Wilson should get to 300 without a hitch. Roberts is already over 400K. Him plus another one. And those there now, all of a sudden, are my two back lines done and Petrarca in the midfield. The big question mark over my head is how in God's good name am I going to get to to Max Scorn? And for that, I don't know. Might involve Tom Powell um, in order to do it. And Darcy, who knows? But, yeah, at this point, hoping that Jordan Sweet, hopefully, sweetie boy, um, can give us some sweet scores here at R, essentially at R2, uh, while we finish upgrading our other lines and really hoping that the totality of my team and the high quality all around the ground in the midfield and the back line can hopefully try and get me to, to cover the loss of not having someone like Big Maxi Gorn in the rucks and really just... Betting against them has been obviously not the most successful of decisions this year and um, really going to have to hope that he chucks in a stinker because if he does, then he's going to drop in price a lot because he's currently really highly priced. He's over 700000 He's obviously the only person at this point in time worth that price tag. Um, he's 710000 and it's going to be really hard for him to maintain this type of pricing and so really hoping that he can have an absolute stinker. Uh, it won't be this week. <laughs> it won't, no. It's never going to happen, is it? It's never going to happen. Uh, maybe Fremantle? Maybe Sean Darcy can do something, please. Collide with him really strong. Treat him rough. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be really hard for me uh, in order to get that guy in. But hopefully all around the ground I could have a top six... All, all of my premiums that I own in my team should hopefully all be top six to eight caliber. Uh, top six, hopefully, in the back line, top six to eight. Maybe Whitford's a question mark, uh, potentially, if he can maintain the scoring. But hopefully, I'll have both Stewart and Ryan in these two spots, and hopefully Petrarca here. And with that midfield, it's probably the best midfield I've ever owned um, by that stage in my super coach life. So guys, this is what the team looks like going into the week. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, obviously, happy to take any and all suggestions coming into this week. You know me. I love hearing from you guys. I love interacting with you. And on that note, that is my team review slash trade ideas, plans at this point. Um, again, let me know what you think. Hit that like button if you like what you have to see here today. A subscription if you're new. Could really help the growth of the channel. And hit that notification bell to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the videos and live streams that we have going on every single week. Obviously, we have our Monday night live streams at 7.30, if you are not aware, as well as the drive homes on Thursday at 7.30 p.m., because, guys, here at the Center Bounce, we do the hard work that you guys don't have.